right, last problem on the section, number 20. Let's start off by talking about a very basic fact first. If I've got the numbers a times b and I'm multiplying them together and I'm getting zero, I know a pretty key fact here. I know that either a or b or possibly both, at least one of them has to equal zero because there's no possible way to multiply two non-zero numbers together end up with zero. So I know that either A or B, at least one of them has to be zero. Well, look at this. I've got three things that I am multiplying together here. I'm multiplying X squared times X plus three times X minus B, and I'm getting zero. Well, that means either X squared has to equal zero or X plus three has to equal zero or X minus B has to equal zero. At least one of those things has to be true, and in this case, only one of these things is going to be true, because what are my possible solutions? My possible solutions are, well, what times itself is equal to zero, what squared is equal to zero, take the square root of both sides, and I get x is equal to zero. That's one solution. Uh, for this one, what makes this second equation true? Well, if x was equal to negative three, that would get the job done. And I am told that the sum of all of the solutions is five. So zero plus negative three plus whatever this is, is going to give me a sum of five. Well, zero plus negative three plus eight is equal to five. And in that case, if my solution is eight, then b must also be eight because it's eight minus eight, which is equal to zero. Eight has to be my correct answer. Guys, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell for all future notifications.